Heavenly Father, we come this morning in your precious image. Lord, we thank you for thy blessings that will bestowed upon us. Lord, we thank you this morning, Heavenly Father, for the marvelous medicine that you're with us up this morning and starting us on another good journey, Heavenly Father. And you guide us out to the house of prayer one more time to make our forces together. We just want to give you the praise this morning because you were going to be praised this morning, Heavenly Father. We thank you for what you've done and what you're doing and what you're going to do, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our Savior this morning, Heavenly Father. Yes. Touch our bodies, Lord Jesus. Keep us in that straight in our path, Lord Jesus. Feel the language of our feet and the language of our pathway, Heavenly Father. Because you're coming back one day and you're coming back for our church, Heavenly Father. When we are the church, Lord Jesus. Oh, we thank you. We praise you, Heavenly Father. Bless our pastor here, Heavenly Father, in a matter where in this family, Heavenly Father. Bless the speaker of the day, Heavenly Father. Bless it right now, Lord Jesus, in a matter where, Heavenly Father. Lord, just give us what we need this morning, Heavenly Father, to go on thanking you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done in the past, Lord Jesus. Bless all the sickness, shedding everywhere, and by your stripes, 
We all are here, Heavenly Father. Touch my dying church family here, Lord, to the one that's here, one that's sick, Lord, you touch them, one that just can't make it, one that on the way, Heavenly Father. Just be with them, Heavenly Father. You're standing on your word, Heavenly Father. You use everything else of favor to do where it will stand forever, Heavenly Father. Bless all our zeros here, Lord, you touch the choir members, Heavenly Father. Touch the musicians, touch the deacons, touch the trustees, touch all the auxiliaries here, Lord Jesus. Keep us together in your name, Lord Jesus. We love you. We praise you this morning, Lord Jesus, for being so good to us, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. And we praise you, Lord Jesus. Be blessed be actually in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and thank God. <laughs> Thank you all for coming this morning. 
This is a special day for our pastor here today. Just give him some praise, too. Give him some praise. Because he is on the road for nine years. Six years. <laughs> praise the Lord. We love you. Thank you for coming and being with us today, Heavenly Father. And gentlemen, just praise the Lord. Let him worry with me.
Lord, it's not about him, Lord. We know him, that it's not about him, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. We thank you for his family, Lord, for being by his side, Lord, in these last six years, Lord, for traveling back and forth from Columbia to Camden, Lord, every week, Lord, to serve your people, Lord, for keeping them safe as they travel, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, Lord. Lord, we just look forward to what's to come, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this church, Lord. Lord, we ask that you just continue to build them and grow them, Lord. Touch the hearts and their minds, Lord. Yes, Lord, the man of God that you placed here today to bring forth your word, Lord, we ask that you touch him right now from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord. Lord, we pray that when the message goes forward, that it fall on good ground. Lord. We pray that lives be changed, that souls be saved here this morning, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Well, there's somebody this morning, Lord, that wasn't able to wake up this morning, Lord. The song we just heard said, I'm glad to be in the service one more time, Lord. But somebody wasn't able to be in the service this morning, Lord. So, Lord, we just thank you for life, health, and strength this morning, Lord. Lord, we know that you are a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, Lord, a light in the darkness, Lord. So we thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, for anybody that might be suffering through sickness this morning, Lord, they are at the place to get healing. But, Lord, I heard a song that said that we don't need the medicine because we have the healer, Lord. So we thank you this morning, Lord, for all that you're doing, Lord, all that you're going to do, even the things that you didn't do, Lord. We thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, continue to bless our deacons, Lord. Continue to bless the ushers, Lord, the trustees, Lord, the members, the officers of this great church, Lord. Have your way, Lord. We offer these services to you, Lord. Lord, we don't invite you here because we know you're already here, Lord. So have your way, Lord. Lord, we'll be so careful and so grateful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor this morning. For it's in the only name that matters that we do pray. Jesus, who is our Christ. And those who love the Lord, touch and agree and say amen. 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 amen.
our members, and our visiting friends, to our beloved pastors. As we say, thank you. Thank you. As we said it lately, as we said the simple word, thank you. Too often we forget. We take your dedication, your commitment, and your caring for granted. You are always there for us. And sometimes we forget to let you know how much we appreciate you and all you do for us. We forget to thank you for words of comfort and concern when we are hurting. We forget to thank you for your prayers on our behalf when you come to God for us, interceding when we need it most. We forget to thank you for the messages you bring us week after week. Messages to draw us closer to our Lord. Messages to lift our heart. Messages to open our eyes. And messages to keep us accountable. We forget to thank you for the countless hours of service and for the sacrifices you make for us. We forget to thank you for leading us, for being our shepherd, and for guiding us to love and obey our good shepherd. We forget to thank you for your selfless giving of your time and energy, of your thoughts and prayers, of your own plans and desires. We need you in the troubled moments of our lives. We trust you to be there for us. We forget that you have needs and feelings too. We forget to thank you and appreciate you and be there for you as you are for us. So we'll say it today and mean it for every day. Thank you, Pastor, with our whole heart. We say thank you and thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Still giving honor to God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to uh, Pastor Barr, our beloved Pastor Fulton, Reverend Jones, and my sisters in the ministry, Reverend Mary McElwain, and Minister Clark, in their absence. I know they will be here if they could. I've been tired to do a tribute to Pastor. Now, when they asked me to do the tribute, I, my first question was, what is a tribute? <laughs> 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 I, 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 I put Sister I on the phone because she did it last year. And she said, well, just tell them how you feel about the pastor. <laughs> okay, that, that I can do. But you might want to put that on. <laughs> I don't have the words. I don't have the words for this man of God that 
he had sent us this gift that is Pastor Warren Bolton and Sister Tanya Bolton and their children. They have been such a blessing to Mount Zion. I thank you, Pastor, for your obedience. Your obedience is for answering a call of God to minister. And secondly, for answering the call to come from outside. Answering the call to come from outside. Your obedience. And Sister Bolton's obedience. Nobody knows what it took to make that kind of move and decision at that point in your life. That took faith. That took faith. <laughs> and that took hearing from God and knowing mm. you heard from God. Yeah. And because of your obedience, when I think about you, I think about Solomon. And God said, What do you need for me? And all he asked for is wisdom to lead his people. Because your goal and your aim is always to glorify God and edify his people. You've got the wisdom. You've got the wisdom. And you're going to get so much more. He got you. He's got you. He's got you. He's got your family. I just thank God daily for you and Sister Bolton. Daily. Daily. Your obedience brought you here. And your obedience is growing this church in every way. In every way. I know for myself what he's done in my life through these folks. And I thank him daily for it. Don't ever be discouraged. No, he's got you. He's got yours. Because of your obedience. You know how to speak the truth in love. We can receive from you because you don't just teach it, you try to live it. Mm -hmm. It's got gotcha. you. Yeah. I don't have words. I just don't have words. When I met you, God, there was a kindred voice, a familiarity. When you first came here, I don't know why I just felt you get out that family feel. And I'm just going to tell you, my mother and father had three girls. We always wanted a girl. So, <laughs> Pastor, I have a doctor. I'm not even asking. <laughs> That's how I feel. I have a doctor. I trust you. Rather, because you, you were my first, you know, my pastor. You continue to teach, guide, direct us. You continue to live in a way that you can say, follow me. That's my request. Just keep doing what you do. Don't let anybody discourage you. I'm amazed and excited about where God is going to take us. What do you do? Where he's going to take you by? I listen to a lot of people. You know, I got the word. I listen to TV. I listen to Black Love. I listen to Father. I listen to everybody. A lot of people. I never got any more. everybody else to get what I got. I want them to get that word that I got so that they can grow as I'm trying to grow. We're pressing toward the mark. We're older as a church, but we aren't always going to be that way. We are small as a church.
church, but with mighty in faith and determination to complete our task on this side. We don't have time to do shepherd and child. We are the Father that. And he will keep on keeping on. Sister Tanya, I can't give a tribute to him without to you. I cannot. Because she's a woman. You're a woman. And the best thing, the most honor I can give you here is to tell you. Honestly, I pray that my son, my grandsons, my great grandson, find a wife such as you, beautiful inside and out, filled with the spirit, when I can help him to walk up the Christian journey. Because you always got your best. You always got your best. He said, but one or two are gathered in my name. He said, I need to get it. He always got his name. Such a blessing. Such a blessing. You know, Deacon uh, Robinson and I were married 35 years. Okay. Don't, don't take for granted one moment. One moment. Two is Mm -hmm. yes. um, have mm -hmm. That's why when I call for prayer a lot of times, I'll tell you, oh, that's just a Because <laughs> I'm already praying. Then I got you praying. But that's pretty for a call. Forward. Everybody sleep okay. And I just believe that I ain't enough that together. He said, if you ask anything, in his will. In his will. In his will. Yes. Say, church, if it ain't in his will, you don't want it. Thank you, Lord. What you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Your family is a blessing. Yes. His sister Vivian, at the minute she came to me with that little kingdom, that was a kingdom. Sister Nancy, I got another sister. We love you. Yeah. Keep on keeping on. Just keep doing what you're doing. Obedience. It'll get you. It'll get you. Amen. Yeah. I don't stop because I can go on. Yeah. I can go on. But know this, my family, how blessed you are. Yeah. How blessed you are. Yeah. Hold him up in prayer. Yeah. In every way, hold him up. He's holding us. He's holding us and so many others. I have never seen a more selfless minister. He don't turn anybody down. He's pastoring people that never been in this church. If the truth been to be told. Because he's a pastor. He's got a pastor's heart. God gave us a shepherd. A true pastor. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what you're supposed to do. Hold him up in prayer. Yes. And we're going to follow him if he finds us. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's all I'm going to say right now. Don't let us stay on our tongue. Thank you.
Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat there on it. And Aaron and Ur stayed up with his hand, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hand was steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discovered it. Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Father, we come now, Lord, the most humble way that we know how. Asking for forgiveness of all of our sins, our shortcomings, our failures, and our faults. Lord, create in us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit. Open our eyes that we may see your word. Our ears that we may hear the hearts we see that have walked there. And then, Lord, hide me behind that old rugged cross. Give me teaching and preaching power from on high. The people see none of you, but all of you. In our son Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. You may be seated in the very presence of, of the Lord. Amen. I'm humble and honored to be here today. I want to teach with the help of the Lord and preach and the guidance of the Holy Ghost will enable me to dissect the pen and deliver the word of God from this subject. Today, let's stay together. Amen. If you believe it, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's stay together. Our text today deals with Moses giving Joshua instructions. The context of the text shows us that unity, what unity and focus can really do in the body of Christ. Unity is defined as being united, a joy as a whole, not being multiple. In other words, oneness. The focus is having or producing a man clear visual definition. Mount Zion, we celebrate this gift of God who has been anointed to preach the gospel for the last 18 years. He has been ordained for seven years, and God has appointed and you have accepted him as your pastor for the last six years. Church, you've been doing a great job of that number six being the day of man. You are maturing even more now. And there is a greater work to be done, but in all to do that, you must stay together. The children of Israel are having problems in the text, staying together in chapter 16, that the Israelite after God has parted the Red Sea, has allowed them to escape. They enter a place they may call the wilderness of sin. And there, Pastor Bolton, they began to complain about being hungry. And so when the Lord run, rain down manna from heaven so that they can eat, then in this chapter, the beginning of chapter 17, they leave the wilderness of sin and they enter into the valley of Rephidim. Rephidim in Hebrew means a resting place. And they begin to complain now about the water and Moses cries out to God and that the people are about to stone him. So God tells him, Brother John, to strike the rock to get water for the people. And it's in the text in verse 8 that while they are fighting among each other in Rephidim, which is a resting place, they learn that Amalek is coming against them to fight. Y'all shout, let's stay together. Can I pause there very quickly and say that all of us have a common enemy today. We are wasting our time when we're trying to fight one another when our enemy is the same person that's called the devil. And isn't it ironic, amen, that Amalek or even they are the descendants of Esau? In other words, uh, these folk that are coming against Israel are their own cousins. It's when they learn that they realize in order to beat the enemy, they got to stay together. Notice they didn't have the same job, but they had the same purpose. Everybody has a job to do, and when everyone does their job, God is glorified and the devil is mortified. Let me show you in the text, Moses directs Joshua to go down in the valley and fight while he stands on the hill with the rod of God in his hand. Then with him is Aaron and her. They all have separate jobs, 
to do, but they were doing it together. Because together does not mean doing the same job. It simply means we have the same purpose and the same goal. I hear the word that says that we are many members, but we are yet one body. We got to have the same mind that said to uplift the name of, of Jesus. I hear Paul said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That was a mind to give God praise. That was a mind to glorify God. That was a mind to magnify God. That was a mind to do the work of God. Listen, you may not be the head, but let's stay together. You may not even be the foot of the eye, but let's stay together because we all have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. It's in this text that we see that but staying together can do. Moses was on top of the hill with Aaron and her, but Joshua was down in the valley with the chosen people. You got to have the right people with you with the right mindset to work. Can I get a witness at church? Let's stay together. And when we stay together, the enemy doesn't even have a chance. So the first thing today to stay together, you got to look to the hill. Please don't miss this. In verse 8 of the text, it said that Amalek, amen, came and fought with Israel. They fought. But it's not until verse 9, Reverend Robinson, that, that Moses says, on oh, tomorrow. Not today, on tomorrow, we're going to fight. Sometimes, church, we in too big of a rush to get in a fight. You say you come for me, amen, I'm coming back for you. And one thing I've learned, amen, the folk that love to fight, amen, they don't understand that this is a war. We got to have a strategy. This is not a fight, but we in a war. Joshua shoes our men. The fight down in the valley, he said, I stay on top of the hill. Moses didn't react to the enemy with feelings, but he had a faith plan to defeat the enemy. When are we going to learn that we got to look to the hill first? When things go wrong in our life, we got to look to the hill first. Let me help you. I lift up my eyes to the hill from which cometh my help. All my help come from the Lord. Listen, being on top of the hill, man, he could see real good. Moses realized in order to see the enemy, I got to have a strategy, and I got to elevate my mind to go higher. You can, he said, I need 2020 vision, Lord. Help me, Lord. I got to get high to see things that are below me. You can't see things at a different level when you're on the same level when folk are arguing and fighting. You got to go to your prayer room and you got to get up and elevate your mind just a little higher. You got to look to the hill and say, Lord, I need your help like never before. Top of the hill. We got to get there. We got to be like the old eagle eyed pop and say, but they that wait on the Lord. He said, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Not only shall we look to the hill, but the text says we got to keep our hands up. Look at the text in verse 10. Joshua does what Moses instructs him to do. Now, wait, 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 Joshua does what Moses tells him to do. I mean, let me read that again. Y'all real quiet. Joshua does what Moses tell him to do. Joshua didn't say God didn't tell me. But he did what Moses, the leader, told him to do. I believe somebody got it over here. I'm going to preach over here. Y'all silent over here. Joshua does what Moses tells him to do. He didn't say, why well, I got to go down in the hill? And you stay up here, Moses. Why well, I got to go down and you on the mountaintop and I got to go down in the hill. Joshua understood that when two or three touch and agree on earth, I'll do it for you in heaven. When two or three are gathered in my name, I'll do it, amen. I'll be in the, the midst of them. Joshua understood that, that we got to work 
Yeah. Please don't miss this. Moses tells Joshua, go down in the valley and fight. I'm going to stay on the hill, but nowhere in the text. I look at 4.30 in the morning, Pastor. Nowhere in the text does Moses tell Aaron and her, come with me. They, they just saw that Moses needed help. They were there to help and not him. Y'all know how he is in the church. We say, ain't nobody asked me. And I ain't doing nothing. Nobody asked me to do nothing on the program, and I ain't doing nothing. I might not even show up. They didn't let me sing my song in the choir. I might not be there next Sunday. Pastor didn't let me preach enough this year. I might not show up. They understood that you got to stay together. Moses hold up his hand in verse 11. But I need you to know that in his hand was also the rod of God that he took with him on a daily basis. It symbolized the word of God. So whatever Moses had, his hand was on. They were with it, but when his hand came down, they were losing. That ought to be a revelation for y'all every time y'all put up your hand and give God praise. Somebody said, when praises go up, that blessing got to come down. When you're going through your trouble, keep your heads up. Look to the hill. Put your hands up in the air and say, Lord, I thank you for another day's journey. Lord, I thank you for bringing me this far. Because when I look back over my life and I see where you brought me from, Lord, you brought me from a mighty long way. But not only must I look to the hill, not only must I keep my hands up, we all need some help. Moses was doing good, and as he kept his hands up, Joshua was doing good. They needed each other to defeat the enemy. Please don't miss this. We need each other to do what God has called us to do at my Zion. Pastor need you, and you need the pastor. You need the usher board. You need the choir. You need you need the minister. You need the teacher. You need the deacons. You need the trustee. We all need one another. Look at the text again. Moses had his hands up to God, but his eyes are on Joshua. His hands are up to God. But his eyes are on Joshua, and not only that, but as Moses' hands are up, and his eyes are on Joshua, Eric, and her eyes are on Moses. They're not washing Joshua because that's not their job. They're washing Moses. That's why the Bible says that you got to wash and pray. You just can't pray. You got to wash and pray. You just can't wash. You got to pray. But when Moses' hand eventually got tired, they saw. Watch this. My God watched the tape because Aaron and her eyes are on Moses and not on Joshua. They saw it and they stayed on their road. Tell your neighbor, stay on your road. And they saw he needed help. They took a rock and placed it under him. Upon the rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Then they get on each side and held up Moses' hand. Can I tell you that you need folk in your life that can help you and pray for you. You need folk to hold up your head every now and then. I got news and a revelation for some of y'all. Amen. It might not be for Mount Zion. It might be for somebody looking on Facebook. Every now and then, your pastor gets tired. Every now and then, first lady gets tired. Every now and then, the children get tired and they need your prayer at hand too. And that, amen, Amalek was just coming with the edge of the sword. I, I hear the word of the Lord say the word of God is like a two-edged sword. Piercing even the divine asunder of the soul and spirit. They said that God wipes them out forever. Anybody else got any enemies, amen, that you need the Lord to fix it? The problem with us, amen, we're too busy trying to fix our own problems. But the minute you give it to God, a God said, I'll handle your fight. We're too busy saying, Lord, fix it for me. Uh, fix
fix it, Jesus, uh, and we will take our hands off of it, Jesus. And that's why I came today uh, to encourage you that no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And so I want to say to Mount Zion today, uh, stay together. Uh, God has been doing new things. God uh, has been doing greater things uh, at Mount Zion the last six years. Uh, and you have to continue to pray for one another. Uh, you have to continue to pray for your pastor. Uh,
all this day of the great work that the Lord is doing to all of you. Say it, God. Can I say there's no harm to overcome a copy? No hard going to paint on the wall. No hard to tell the choir you want you to wear some color. Mm -hmm. These things are not worth the kingdom of God. We can all agree that Jesus is right. Yes, and 30 years of preaching, 22 years of pastoring, I'm still amazed at some of the stuff we're being arguments about. Stuff that ain't got no salvation in it. No. Well, we will learn how to be warriors and not fighting. We got too many fighters in church. We got to have warriors. We got to strategize. Because what the enemy wants to do is divide us and put this church against that church, that church against that church, members against members, and members against deacons. And, but let's stay together. Let's have that humble spirit. And God will elevate us. God's going to continue to bless y'all because you have a man that I consider to be humble and meek, full of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. But doesn't make him weak, it makes him strong. I thank God for your friendship and God for your pastorship. Y'all stay together. I want to pray for y'all. I have the liberty. Father, I come the most on the way I know. Simply listen. If you don't mind, first lady, can y'all come here together? Just y'all two with the sons. I want to pray for for this family. I want y'all to pray with me. share with you. I told my wife today we were both put in finishes touches. Had to do what the Lord asked me to do. Getting ready. My wife made a statement about something, a question. We're watching a fellow pastor preach. She asked a question. I said, vocational pastors every week Something goes not a hundred percent. Either it's your God, church, or your family. Now, a lot of times, family suffers. I know you do a great job, Pastor. You know you. Okay. There are times I want to be there for my children. I could. I want you to pray for them. Yes, he's a man and woman just like you. And they're gorgeous just like your parents. But you too, there's a sacrifice that's made. And I want you to uplift them like they uplift you. I'm not saying that you don't, but I want to keep it mindful to you. It's not easy. And I believe that this church has what it takes to continue to grow because you have a genuine love for one another in the past. I get it, so. And so I want them, I want to pray for them, Father. And I want y'all to agree with me and you're ready to, to point your hands toward this way. Father, thank you for this family. Thank you for this.
as man serving, woman serving. And these male servants today. Bless them, Lord. Keep them in the power of your hand. Keep them together like one little chain. God, we thank you for the anointing as our own women both tonight. His wife and his children. Keep them in perfect peace and health. Lord, we thank you for the Mount Zion family. Each member one by one and name by name. Keep them, Lord. Keep the love of unity that it may abide. Bless them, Lord, individually and corporately as a church family. Look on their homes. Bless it coming in and bless it going out. Continue to multiply in this church. Add to the church daily for such as me. Bless, Lord, families. They may be prosperous on their jobs, prosperous in health, but most of all, Lord, prosperous in you. God, we give you glory to them. And as any among us sick, we touch and agree now, Lord, you touch them. From the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Help them in the name of Jesus. Look on bereaved families everywhere. Let them know, Lord, that the sun will again shine again. Lord, we love you and we magnify you. We glorify you. Yes. You've been good to us. Help us, Lord. To keep our hands up. Yes. Our heads toward the heel. Yes. Help us to learn how to help one another. Lord, we thank you. For all that has been done. Yes. Said and shall be done. Is in Jesus' name. That we pray. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 